Today I want to talk a little bit about words, people's use of words that we don't know what they mean. Um, I got a really funny story, uh, if you hang with me for a little bit. But there's so many words that we receive every day and we hear daily and we use daily. And we don't know what they mean. Uh, I'm going to stick biblically and say, you know, like the word sin. Uh, there's a lot of people, I'm assuming, that don't know what the word sin means. I didn't. I kind of, I mean, I had an idea, but I didn't know that it literally meant separation from God. Like when you're in the act of sinning, God is not present in your life. And when God's not present in your life, you're surrounded by darkness because he is the light. So when I found out that any sin, like even cursing and I don't know, uh, I, when I learned that, I, I changed my behaviors drastically because I didn't want to be separate from God. Uh, another word is mercy. You know, mercy, we pray often for mercy and grace and blessings. But the word mercy, it means you didn't receive punishment when you should have. You know, you've done something wrong and you shouldn't have done that. And to get a bye, to get a pass, that's mercy. And so we ask God, you know, please give us mercy. And the next one is grace. Grace is when we receive something that we shouldn't have received because we didn't deserve it. We didn't put in the work for it. We didn't love right for it, but we still got it. So you have mercy that means not getting punished when you should get punished. And grace, receiving when you shouldn't. And so a blessing is putting the two of those together, receiving them both at the same time. So to provide mercy and, gra mercy and grace to somebody is a blessing. It's hard to provide mercy. Grace is a little bit easier, but mercy's tough because that's we're talking about revenge. That I get, I'll get you back attitude. That mindset of I will get you back. That's not mercy. You have to have mercy. We're taught to have mercy and grace. Why should we get? Why should we have the right to ask God for something? if we're not okay with uh, granting it to somebody else. And people say, yeah, well, that's because we're human. We're meant to sin. Well, we're meant to control that also. We're meant to control all of it. But we move too fast. We have to slow down as a people. Everything we do is too fast. And it's hard because we still want to be able to keep up with society, which is moving very fast. There's already things that we miss out on. You know, if you're an Apple guy, you miss out on all the other stuff. If you're a, the other guy, I have a Samsung, so I'm guessing I'm not Apple. I don't know my electronics very well. But uh, yeah, and we're, so we're always missing out on something. Um, we have to slow down. Slow down and learn to use words properly. Learn to, when we, you ask for mercy or grace, to be serious about it and not just throw it into a prayer because it sounds like a churchy word. Um, prayer. Pray. You know, the word pray, I thought it, I mean, I knew what it meant. To me, pray, because I grew up, I was, I was raised Catholic, so to me, pray meant kneeling down, folding your hands together, closing your eyes, nodding your head, and saying, in our Father, or I hail Mary. I later learned in life that that's not prayer at all. It's, uh, it's more like talking about somebody in front of them. Uh, it's somebody else's words. It's like a Hallmark card. You know, you get that that amazing Hallmark or birthday card that was written by somebody else because they didn't have their own words. Um, 
We've got to get past those days. We have to have our own words. Write a kind message on a piece of paper. You don't have to spend $8 to get somebody a message that you truly didn't send. But, yeah, words. Divine. I knew what divine was, but I didn't really know what it was. So we also, you know, we talk too much. We talk too much without teaching. People talk on the surface. People talk on the surface all the time. Um, about the weather, about, you know, when we pray in groups, we pray for mercy and grace. But a lot of times you don't hear specific prayers like real Real talking to God. We sometimes tend to not open our hearts in front of other people because we don't want to be judged by them. But we're, we're the Christians. We're not, we're not supposed to be judging. We're supposed to have a relationship so tight that if somebody does judge or something, some action, some illicit action like that is happening, we check each other. We say, hey... I don't think that's, uh, I don't think you're on the right path there, my friend. It doesn't have to be persecution, but we need to talk respectfully to each other. I know I, I appreciate so much, and I did at the time when I got checked many, 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 many times. You know, just doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing. My brother will say, hey, you know, I don't think you should be talking to your wife like that. But not like that. He wouldn't say it on him, I don't think. But they also prayed with me. Um, yeah, sorry, I got down a rabbit hole. You've seen a whole vision of too many goofy things. Um, so how is it that we don't grasp the concept of eternity? We really don't. Most people don't. I think I do now. And that's why I changed my ways. Um, don't you think that if if more people grasped the concept of eternity... They would take this time here much more serious. Uh, to me, that's why you got to put God first in all that you do. So you take this time here very serious. You can have fun and everything. You know, God's down for a good time. Um, I mean, look at Jesus' first miracle. He turned water into wine. So they're, they're down for a good time. They're not saying, you know, God said all this I've put here for you. Now, people say, start talking about drugs and stuff like that, you know, against me. But God didn't put drugs here. We made that. We did that. That's man's work. God put the, the, the substances here, but man put it together to make something, you know. Yeah, we have such a short period of time to get it right. It's scary. So you got to read the Bible. You can't say you believe in God if you don't believe in the Bible. The Bible is God's written word, right? If that's what we believe. If you truly believe in the Bible, then you would know what sin is and what it's not. Now, if you really consider yourself a Christian, but you haven't read the Bible, you need to read the Bible. You need to start with it. You go find a Bible that you're comfortable with. Find a Bible that uh, you know you can read without falling asleep. Even if it's a children's Bible, start with the children's Bible. You'll grasp the concept. You can start with the children's Bible and don't read a lot at one time. Read a little bit. Stop. Think about it. Join a group. Go to a church. Join a men's group. Join a, a church group somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And you have to start with good resources. So check your resources. Don't use words like mercy and grace and blessings if you don't know what they mean.
yeah, getting a different Bible, um, some, you know, some people just, they, they have to find a reason to argue. So many people have to find a reason to argue. If you're arguing over the Bible, I would say you better check yourself. I've read, I've read a few different varieties of the Bible. Some are way easier. Some are way more uh, difficult. But you can find really easy versions to read. The story is still there. The storyline is still there. The words might change. The color of the hair might change. The name of the city might even change. But it's changing due to language. They're not changing the actual storyline they're using the words that come closest to so you still get the real story you just don't get the harder words to pronounce and when you come if you come across harder words to pronounce um take it take a minute grab a book grab google look it up uh, if there's different definitions then look at the one that's most biblical you know, if there's words that you're unfamiliar with, um, we got to the point where, you know, I got so hungry for the word and I understood the Bible pretty well. You know, we'd get to, and look up uh, like the Sermon on the Mount. Well, you can go on YouTube these days and find, or Google and, and see it and research it and look into it. Um, you can get much more personal with it these days. So, yeah, all, all of the Bibles are relatively the same. Why people argue about the written word when it's been changed so many times before? People are like, you know, it's the King James Version. It's the, you know what, you don't have, I could see if you had actual, the scriptures, the scrolls themselves, then yeah, you have something to argue about. But otherwise, it's nonsense. Knock it off. Stop arguing about stupid stuff. The version of your Bible really doesn't matter. Um, like I said, the story's there. And you should do your own homework outside of the Bible anyway also. We've progressed as a society. Um especially with a lot of excavation, you know, over there in Israel. We, we're, there, there's new discoveries all the time, but, um, you know, you, you can't, you shouldn't really go down that rabbit hole until you've done your research and you're solid in the written word. So that's it. I'm going to cut this one out. It's short. Um, know what you're saying. Really know what you're saying. Stop using words if you truly don't know what they mean. Um, Yeah, especially when it comes to the Bible, especially because it's, you know, that's eternity. Eternity is so long. I mean, thank God that, Lord, you gave us separation from that knowledge here in our human bodies because it would probably explode our brains. And it's stuff that we don't need to know, know all about. We just need to be, you know, know that there is a much longer process after this. And if you consider yourself a Christian and you have not read the Bible, I totally get it because I did it for 45 years, but it's time to grow up and I'm just trying to help you out uh, and say it's time to grow up. It's time to mature. Stop watching Netflix. Stop binge watching nonsense. Stop putting nonsense into your brain until your brain's full of knowledge. Once your brain's full of knowledge and your brain swells and hurts, then you turn on nonsense on TV so that, you know, your brain can relax. You know, I do that for about 20 minutes a day. Um, I fill my brain with as much information as I can. I try and learn a few new things a day, learn new approaches to uh, the same obstacle of whatever I'm doing in life and try and change things up. But really try and learn and then only watch TV 
when the learning's done, but but so many people don't learn anymore. Earlier I talked about um, talk too much without teaching. I did a whole blog on that. People talk so much and there's no information passed along. I mean, the information that is passed along is just nonsense. Why do I need to know this? Why am I filling my brain with things about your next door neighbors, pool cleaners, cousins, nephew who lives in Poland? You know, doesn't affect me at all. We got to start using real words and start being more open. All right, that was way too much. Peace and blessings.